Hi and welcome to the Journalism Salute. I'm Mark Simon. In each episode, we'll talk to or about an interesting person or organization related to journalism. The intent is to show that journalists are not the enemy of the people. Thank you for listening. On this episode, we're joined by Carly Paulson. Carly is publisher and editor of the Clark County Courier in Clark, South Dakota. Carly recently purchased the paper. She had been working for it as the office manager and typesetter. She's a graduate of Minnesota State Moorhead. Hi, Carly. Hi. All right. So let's explain uh, your journalism origin story to start things out. In my case, I started working at the Courier in December of 2022. And actually, I had been working at a local daycare in October of 2022. And by December, a church friend of mine had come up to me at the daycare and was like, hey, you want to replace me at the newspaper? I'm looking to retire. And she was the typesetter paginator person. And I was working at a daycare and that's not really ever what I wanted to do, but I needed the money. So I was there. And so when she asked me, I was like, sure, I'll check it out. Why not? And uh, I've been here ever since. (laughs) So what were you originally like, give us, get us through your life a little bit before this point. What were you originally hoping to do? I went to college and got a degree for animation. And knowing that I wanted to stay in South Dakota, I kind of figured that I wasn't actually going to get into animation, but getting the degree was good enough for me. So afterwards, I kind of thought that I would try to get something in advertising or some sort of creative graphic design outlet because I also had minors in graphic design and graphic communications and all that good stuff. So I just kind of wanted to get into something artsy after school, but I wasn't really sure where I was going, hence the daycare for monetary needs at the time. (laughs) All right. So what led to you purchasing the paper? I had been working for about six months at the paper and... The owner at the time really wanted to retire. He had been looking for a buyer to take over the business for at least five years, if not longer, and hadn't found anybody yet. And he didn't want to see it go away, to see it close. So he was holding on, but he really, really wanted to retire badly. (laughs) And so after six months of working with the newspaper, working with him and kind of knowing the whole job by that point in and out, I was like, you know what? I was considering, I was considering it. I was like, you know, maybe I can run this by myself. And so from that six month point onward, I was kind of gathering information and trying to see if I could actually do this by myself or if I was just kind of a loony, but I made it work, so. <laughs> so not a loony. Yeah, not a loony. <laughs> Is there anything in your current family or heritage that lent itself to storytelling, newspapers, the, the attraction of anything uh, journalism-wise? It's actually kind of funny. And this didn't really have any effect on me personally, but my grandma's brother, so my granduncle, great uncle, Glenn Elmore, actually also runs a paper in South Dakota, the South Shore Gazette. And his daughter bought and ran the paper for a long time, but she died in 2008. And so after she died, his wife and him took over the paper and have been running it ever since. And actually his wife just died last year. So now it's just him. And he's in his 80s and he's still publishing every week. And so that's a really cool piece of newspaper history in my family that I didn't really even think about when I took over the newspaper. Wow. So, okay. So you're in your early 20s, right? And he's in his his 80s. Yes, he's in his 80s. And you're both, and he's still going strong? 
Yes, he keeps publishing. I get I get the South Shore Gazette every week. Yep. <laughs> Very nice. That's, yeah. that's awesome. That's that's yeah. fantastic. Why don't you tell us about Clark County? As I understand it, population 3,800. What are the things that make the county uh, interesting or distinct? Well, thinking about that question, I feel like the most unique thing about Clark and Clark County is our an- annual Potato Day celebration in August, <laughs> the first weekend. Everybody, whether they've lived here their whole lives or only lived here for a year, will come back that first weekend of August every year and come to the Potato Days. And the most famous event during Potato Days is our mashed potato wrestling. So <laughs> that's <laughs> what I think of when I think of Clark. Okay, so I, I would imagine just that 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 something like that, that the coverage of that is taken very seriously, right? Yes. I mean, we love getting pictures of that kind of stuff. It's great. Yep. So explain to us, like, like this is a weekly, this is a, what's the, the publishing, how, the setup? What's your staff? How do things kind of work in this arrangement that you've got now? Right now... We're a weekly community newspaper. We publish on Wednesdays every week. Currently, it is myself as a full-time employee, and then I have two part-time employees. One is a proofreader. She got hired as a proofreader, and now she just kind of does everything and anything, kind of kind of an all over the place gal and then my second part timer is our sports writer and photographer and we're also looking for more writers but at the moment it's not working out so well but that's everybody's problem right now it seems like and and the history of the paper dates back to the uh 19th century right 1880s yeah wow okay yep. so this is so, so was that was that something that you kind of had in mind when you bought it that you were like, shoot, this is something that you, I, I presume you've lived there for a while. This needs to continue, that kind of thing. Yeah, I have lived here my whole life. And yep. I I honestly can't say that the history of the newspaper really had any effect on my decision, although I I knew going into it that we needed to keep the paper. So the fact that it's been here for, since 1880 didn't affect my decision, but the fact that our community needed a newspaper, that's why I gotcha. bought it. Why do you think your community sense. why do you think your community needed a newspaper so much? Oh, I don't know. Everybody just ever after I bought the paper, everybody from the community came up to me and just thanked me and was like I'm so glad you took over the paper. I would have been lost without my paper. So, and that ties in with the bank too and how I was able to even buy the place. I had to get a bank loan, of course, from our bank here. And me being a 23 year old with barely any credit, you know, it's not not a great bank loan application, but because they had known me, since I grew up in the community and because they knew they needed to keep the paper alive, they decided to take a chance on me basically and hope that I persevered. So you've owned the paper for a bit now. Uh, what are the, some some of the things that you've implemented to try and, uh, I don't want to use the words modernize it, but to just to change things or have you kept things mostly the same? For now, a lot of the like design elements of the newspaper are the same, but some of the things that we have changed is the very first thing I did was update all of the computer systems, the printers, the credit card machine, and all the software that were on the computers because they were very, very slow and very old, so they needed to be updated So I knew right away that was the first thing I was going to do. And then we also have started printing photos for the community. So like physical photos, if we print them in the newspaper, we'll say, hey, you want this photo? We'll print them for you. 
And then I also started a Facebook page and added puzzles or some puzzles to the newspaper to help get community involvement. So I, I, and in the future, I'd like to change the design of the newspaper more and change it up a little bit more, but this year it's just kind of a settling into things and we really don't have enough people to change a whole lot at the time at the moment so the the puzzle thing is interesting because that kind of draws people in right like, yeah, are you are you are you the puzzle creator no i actually got a subscription to a puzzle service creator yeah, yeah. service and my grandma is actually one of the people behind me saying hey put those puzzles in those puzzles are good <laughs> so i'm she's pretty much my main reason for putting puzzles in <laughs> wow okay no that's cool that's uh, I was, as i said i was just reading uh, there was an article today i was reading about this about the role of those those sorts of things in newspapers so what's your like what's your vision for the paper you're not necessarily doing the journalism your employees are following your lead so what's the vision that you've set for them my vision is just to get the best paper that we can out every week and sometimes it's easier sometimes it's harder but every week we strive for the best and i mean that's all we can really do so. what does best look like Oh, good photos, good stories, if we can. Some weeks are better than others, you know. It it just depends. Like, the Potato Days newspaper was great, great photos. <laughs> Hold people right in. But sometimes, if nothing's going on, you know, it's a pretty piddly paper. It just <laughs> depends. Gotcha. What's the What's the business model? Our business model is the same thing, basically, just do the best we can with what we've got that's our business model <laughs> when when the paper was at its i guess peak at least within your lifetime how many employees did did he have before me or before i started working here i think there was maybe at most there was four or five people but okay. But right before I started working here, replacing the Annette, there was only three still. So okay. it was, yep. I'm look, so I'm looking at a selection of your front pages. It's a, this is a true community paper. Like if you were going to define what a community paper was, very much uh, fits the bill. A uh, lot of local sports coverage. You identify, you do things like you identify and spotlight the new teachers in the school system. You mentioned Potato Day. That stood out uh, from what I looked at. What kind of coverage, what coverage are you most proud of since you've been there besides Potato Day? Personally, for something that I've covered was my Mother's Day story that I did on my own mom right after we lost my sister, actually. So that was a personal crowd coverage moment for me. But other than that, I'm really proud of our sports coverage that Heather, our sports writer, does. It's amazing. What What does it look like? Oh, usually two or three photos plus the stats and comments from coaches and yeah the stats and sometimes comments from the students how important is sports coverage in that town very important very very important i think if we weren't to have as much sports coverage as we do in our paper we would probably have a lot less subscribers just because a lot of our subscribers are parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles of students at school that are in sports and looking to see if their kids are pictured in the newspaper or if their stats are in the newspaper. And so that's a big part of the community. This is, this is a paper that 
I guess, you know, 25 years ago, I worked at a paper where I always thought about, like, I was writing for the refrigerator, meaning that I was hoping that the subject of the story, that their parents would clip it out and put it on the yeah. fridge. Yeah. Is, is, that, that, is that what this is? Kind of. Yeah. A little bit. I mean, we talk about the highlights of each sport event, and we'll... we'll include each of the kids stats and depending on what photos we get we'll print photos of the athletes heather our sports writer and photographer goes to a lot of the events so she gets a lot of good photos and is really connected with the sports and the athletes what sports are biggest in the in the county oh that's kind of the hard question. I'm leaning towards basketball, though. Our biggest one. So what are the, like, what's a checklist of the kinds of things that you have to go through in a typical week in terms of from, you know, working from a blank slate, essentially, to getting the actual paper out, the things that you specifically do? Thursdays and Fridays are kind of when we start to work on a week's newspaper. So We'll start getting submissions from the emails or mail or over the phone, and we'll start working on them Thursday and Friday, and then whatever we don't get done on Thursday and Friday and whatever comes in over the weekend, we start working on Monday. And Mondays are our big day for getting stuff done, formatting, and all of that deadline day. Monday is deadline day. <laughs> That's the day that we also have to get shipping labels updated and sent to our printer in Orangeville. And then on Tuesdays, we finalize any formatting if somebody missed a deadline and we have to do some more formatting on Tuesday morning. We'll, we'll do that and then we'll paginate and then we'll send that off to the printer in Ortonville and uh, send it to our website manager as well so that she can update the website to and, have, and then do you have to distribute it like do you have to bring it around to the the different stores and stuff actually some of them yes so on wednesdays we have the paper in the office and then we have to do all the marking up and all the math fun stuff to figure out advertising percentages and the weight of the newspaper and inserts if we have them and then once we have all that math done we have to go drop off all the tubs of newspapers to the post office and then hand them the check for delivering the newspapers. And then we actually go to the two gas stations in town and the grocery store in town, get last week's paper to see how much they sold. And then we figure out their billing based on how much they sold. So and that's and then we come back to the office on Wednesday after all that and mark up the paper again and see what everybody owes us and start the billing and then it just repeats. That's kind of a weekly day in the life of our no, that, paper. <laughs> that's great. It's very it's very I guess old fashioned. I guess is is kind of the way to describe it. And it's good to know Probably. that these starts of th that these sorts of things still exist. Um, what's your favorite part of it so far? My favorite part of the job is knowing that my work is being seen and appreciated. I can't tell you how many times people have come up to me and said, oh, you're doing such a good job with the paper. And, oh, I'm so glad you took over the paper and compliments like that. Or this was a really good story or this was a really good photo. And that just really makes me feel good about my decisions and what I'm doing. So that's my favorite part the hardest part the hardest part is the deadlines not necessarily <laughs> on our end but on other people's end people getting it to us before a deadline that's the hardest part i can imagine because sure. that's the part that's not in, in your control exactly uh, as much <laughs> yes do you, do, you, do you ever do you, you've seen like i the the stories have been out recently particularly about the paper in kansas that had its offices raided and such, but and that that's specific to certain things to to coverage. 
have you run into any situations, whether it's local news or if you've even, you know, ran something that had some sort of a national perspective that where maybe people have not been happy? You know, I've, I actually haven't gotten any negative feedback thus far. And I don't know if that's because I'm still in my first year and they don't want to scare me off or if it's <laughs> because they don't mind it as much. I'm not sure because I, I, like I said, I really haven't received any negative feedback, only positive feedback thus far. So you, is there any political coverage in in the paper at all? We run the senator columns, weekly columns, as long as they're not overly political. And during like election times, we'll run more political articles as well, dealing with the information people need to know about ballots and all that fun stuff. Is your town a Trump town? Do you have to deal with any consequences of that in terms of trust? I think our community trusts us enough just because we're smaller and more focused and we don't like those big scandal political scandals we don't put anything like that in the newspaper because it's it's a local community newspaper so we keep that kind of stuff out we just focus on the local stuff so i think our community has an easier time trusting us as a news outlet just because of how how much smaller we are and how much more focused our news coverage area is rather than nationwide you're in washington one day new york in the next and yada yada gotcha so how has has doing this for the time that you've done it changed your worldview or, or changed how you you just view things in general i have a lot much more respect for newspapers and the people that work in newspapers and journalism and I also have a lot much more I don't know if respect is the right word but a better sense of people and their work environment like you don't know how hard a person's job is when you're not the one doing it and you're not seeing what's going on like before I was doing all this, I didn't realize how hard it was to do all this. And I think people on the outside still think that way. And I mean, I'm sure they do. So I just, this, doing this has really brought a (laughs) a humbleness to me, I guess. Like I, I can understand where some jobs that I don't do are probably hard. Are there other newspaper publishers that you're like familiar with that you've commiserated with over, over, you know, and and that you kind of lean on for advice or suggestions? Yeah, actually, Carrie and Garrett Moritz run the Garrett's, Garrettson Gazette in Garrettson, South Dakota. And Carrie is actually our website manager. So I talk with them a lot. And if I ever have questions, I talk to them a lot. Is there a journalism related issue that you're particularly passionate about? Stopping the spread of misinformation is my passionate journalism topic. I if there's misinformation printed, I want to make sure that we correct it and get it right out there and I I don't like to see misinformation out there if it can be prevented. So at the six month mark, I read an article, or I guess you were about six months in, there was an article that said that the job wasn't completely consuming you, that you were able to manage your work-life balance pretty well. It's a few months later, so I'll, I'll re-ask it just because I wasn't in on that interview. How, how do you manage your mental health? <laughs> I stay hydrated and I eat enough and sleep enough, thankfully. And, you know... Regarding mental health and the job, I just have to turn my work mode off when I leave the office, or at least I try to the best I can. Since I'm the boss, that's not always possible, but I try to, at my best, leave the office and leave it there and 
shut off and go home and relax and do home stuff rather than work stuff. So I think that's how I keep saying at the moment. <laughs> do you have a long-term view of what you want the paper to be? In the future, I'd like to size it down to a tabloid size because it's easier to read and smaller and easier to hold. I'd like to change the design overall eventually when I have the time to. <laughs> I'd like to make it colorful, eye-catching, you know, vibrant. Just change it up a little bit. And yeah, I I I would eventually like to see a lot more change in the newspaper but for now we're just chugging along <laughs> yep what software are you using to do everything that you do adobe InDesign, and photoshop but so the podcast is called the journalism salute we salute you for your good work and we ask that you do likewise is there a journalist or journalism organization that you would like to salute salute for their good work maybe someone you don't know I would definitely like to salute my great uncle, Glenn Elmore, at the South Shore Gazette. And I would also like to salute Carrie and Garrick Moritz at the Gerritsen Gazette. They all have supported me and helped me thus far, and I hope they continue to. What's the best example of something they've they've done, like a specific thing? <laughs> Carrie and Garrick have answered all of my questions that I've had thus far, and Carrie's really helped me understand the website part of things because I have no knowledge of websites whatsoever. So she's really helped me in that regard. So that's that's a big part of it, honestly. <laughs> Carly Paulson, ClarkCountyPublishing.com. You can find the Clark County Courier there, Clark, South Dakota, the voice of Clark County since 1880. Carly is keeping that alive, and we salute you for that. Carly, thank you for taking the time to join us. Best of luck with this. We'll be following as uh, it progresses. Thanks, Mark. Thank you for listening to the Journalism Salute. Please let us know what you think of the show. You can find us on Twitter at JournalismPod, and you can email us at JournalismSalute at gmail.com.